Okay, everyone. So now we are learning the object-oriented concepts. Any of the language which is supporting the four features. The one is the abstraction. Second one is inheritance. Third one is encapsulation, and fourth one is the polymorphism. If any language is supporting these four features, that is called the object-oriented programming language. So now here we are learning that what are the object-oriented concepts. Concepts means what is the meaning of these things. What is the abstraction? Whenever we are going to hide something, hide any data, that is called the abstraction. Let us suppose we are having a car. If I am going to purchase this car, we know that the person should only be having the information where is the steering wheel and how it is working. Now where are the brakes? Now how to apply the brakes and what are other controls? So that is the only thing required about the car. But we are not aware about the wirings. So where my clutch pedal is connected, I don't have to worry. How the steering wheel work, I don't have to worry. So these things are not required by the user. Similarly, if we talk about the programming language, if I design one software, user should only aware that how to work with that. It should not be going into the detail that how many objects are used, how many variables are used. Just like I am taking one more example. Let us suppose you have designed the ATM machine. Now in that ATM machine, you only swipe the card and take out the money. Now how this money is deducted, how many variables are used by the program, that user should not aware. So that is called the abstraction, which is called data hiding. In the object-oriented programming languages, just like the C++, .NET, Java, we are having the feature of abstraction. Here we use the public, private, protected. These keywords are there. With the help of that, we can just provide the data to the user, which is only required. Only the essential data is shown. So that is called the abstraction. So the definition is showing the essential data and hiding the unnecessary data. So this is the abstraction. The next feature is inheritance. Let us suppose that we have designed a code. Now maybe this is the code of the clock. We have designed a good clock. Now this code I want to inherit into some other code. Let us suppose that I am going to develop a window. Now in this window I want that the above code should come. So that is perfectly possible. So the coding of clock we can take out in the coding of the program. Just like if I am designing a window and here I want the clock. So I am not going to write the new code. I will inherit the previous code. So whenever we are going to use the previous code that is called the reusability. The reusability concept is taken by the inheritance. Let us assume that you are having your parents and which are having some properties. Property in the sense of their features. Now those features are in you also, just like your face is the similar or maybe your body language or maybe talking about your height. So they are almost similar with your parents. So inheriting the parent property, taking the parent property is called the inheritance. So here we inherit our parent property. So from their concept come, if we are going to design a good project, now in this project, we are taking the help of other codes. We are not going to redesign completely. So the previous code is taken and taking into the new program that is called the inheritance. So here we are using the concept of reusability. Inheritance can be of multiple type, just like multi-level, multiple, hierarchical. So there are multiple ways of inheriting. If you are inheriting two codes into one, if you are inheriting one code into the another, or you are going to inherit one code to the another, another to the one another, then it is also possible. So there are multiple ways of the inheriting the code. So that is providing you the reusability means existing code can be used somewhere else. That is called the reusability. The next feature is encapsulation. Whenever we are working with any of the programming language, then we know that we used to define some of the variables, just like we define the variable A or the B. Now, 
also we are having some of the functions just like we are having some function or maybe we are having let us suppose subtract function so these are the functions we use functions or the procedure they are the same thing so these things are clubbed together that is called the encapsulation so here we are going to combine these two things one is the variables declaration and second one is the function or the procedure these variable declaration just like we declare in the c programming int a int b float a double a this type of declaration or in the dot net we use a as integer b as double c as string so these declaration are called the data members so this is the data member and afterward we are having the various procedure and the function just like sum subtract where we are performing something and these are the procedures so the combination of this data members and the member function procedures are called member function so data members and member function is called the class so that class concept is taken from the encapsulation so here the classes are created so we can say that wrapping up of data and members are called encapsulation so wrapping up of data and function into the single unit means combining the data members we know that the variable we are declaring all the data members and functions functions are the member functions whatever the function we declare into the single unit single unit is the class so the concept of class is taken from the encapsulation now the next thing we are having is polymorphism as the name signify polymorphism so one thing into multiple form is called the polymorphism earlier in the c programming we have seen that if we are going to declare a function let's say sum now afterward this sum word we cannot use anywhere just like if i want to declare sum again for let's say one variable that is not possible again if i want to declare this sum for two variable let's say a comma b that is again not possible because this sum word we have used so anywhere we cannot use that we has to use at least sum one sum two sum three this way so same word we cannot use that was the c programming but here if we talk about the object oriented programming languages here we can use the single word into multiple form so that is perfectly possible with the c++ java .net who are the object oriented programming that we can use a single word just like sum now this sum we can use for let's say no parameter then we can use this sum for let's say one parameter and this sum we are using for let's say two parameter now that is perfectly fine although there are some restrictions that different type of parameter should be there or different number of parameter should be there so that is a restriction but yes we can use that so that is called the polymorphism one thing into multiple form so any language which is supporting all these four features the first one is abstraction second one is inheritance third one is encapsulation and fourth one is the polymorphism so these four features are called the object oriented concepts now from these four features any language can be object oriented just like we are having c++ java .net. from these four features there are some other features which are taken so now we are discussing the other features so now we are discussing the other features which are supported by the object oriented programming language we know that abstraction abstraction is a data hiding so this is one feature which is already there then inheritance means code reusability so that is already there encapsulation means wrapping up of data and functions inside a single unit and single unit is the class so from the encapsulation there is one other feature which is taken which is called classes and structure if we talk about the class and structure both work in the same ways both are the user defined data type we know that there are some inbuilt data types just like float integer double 
character, string. Now their variables we create. Similarly, we can create the variables which is called object of the classes. So classes and structure are the user defined data type whose objects are created. And with the help of that, we can access these classes and structure. And we should know that inside the class and structure, we can define their own member functions and the data members. We can declare the variables. We can use the various procedure. So this class and structures are taken from the main features. So they are called the other features. Now afterward, we are having the polymorphism. Polymorphism is of two category. The first type of polymorphism is called static polymorphism and the second type of polymorphism is called dynamic polymorphism. Whenever we are going to use the polymorphism at compile time, so that is called static polymorphism and whenever you are using the polymorphism on runtime, that is called the dynamic polymorphism. Here we are having two concepts which are coming. We know that one thing into many form that is the origin of polymorphism. So in the static polymorphism, it work on the compile time and at the compile time, we are having the method overloading. So this overloading feature is taken from the static polymorphism and this overloading feature is added to the other feature. The next one we are having is the dynamic polymorphism means on the runtime we are using the polymorphism and that is the concept which is used by overriding. Overriding or method overriding both are the same thing. So this overriding feature is also added to the other feature. As we know that overloading, overloading means whenever we are having a function or the procedure that is used with the single name into multiple form. So here we are going to define this thing at the compile time means whenever we are writing the code at that time we define that these are the three procedure and these three procedures will be used into the program and they will be having the same name. Let us suppose that they are having the same name which is sum. So that is called the overloading. In the overloading we are having certain restrictions just like variable should be having different number. Here you can see that in the first example, we are having zero argument. In the next, we are having one argument. In the next, we are having two argument. So here arguments can be different in number or different in type. Let us suppose that if both are having two, two arguments, then let us suppose the first function is having integer type argument. Then second should be float type or double type. So this is how there are some kind of restriction then we can apply the overloading and this overloading we do at the compile time. Compile time means whenever we are writing the code. So that is the overloading. Next we are having is the overriding. This overriding we are performing on the runtime. If I am taking one more example here, let us suppose that we are having two procedures. One is sum a comma b and also other is the same procedure with the same name, same number of argument and same type of argument. Here we can see that both the procedures are having same name that is sum. If I talk about number of argument, both are having two arguments. So first is having the two, second one is having the two. And if both types are also same, let us suppose that A and B both are of integer type in both ways. So that is called the overriding. Overriding you can understand that anybody can override. Override means taking the powers of somebody. Let us suppose that two are the managers. Now they are working independently. One can work at a time. So if let us suppose the first manager is working. This is the manager who is working right now. Now second manager comes and takes the power of the first one. So that is called the overriding. So here the second procedure comes and take the power of the first one and now second one is into the power and that is working. So one will work at a time that is called the overriding. So these are the two concepts which are added to the other feature. So we should understand that overloading and overriding both are the part of polymorphism. If you talk about the overloading that is the static polymorphism. That means on the compile time, we have to define the code. 
and in the static polymorphism or the overloading we are going to define the functions but these function may be having the same name but their arguments will be different just like in the first one there is a zero argument second one one argument then third one two argument so either you provide different number of argument or you assume that their arguments are same let us suppose that both are having the same argument then their type should be different just like the first one is of integer and second one is of float or the double so that is the overloading but if we talk about the overriding overriding is taken from the dynamic polymorphism that means on the run time it work and here we have taken the example that two functions are having the same name same number of argument that is two and here is two and same type also means here ab is of integer and also ab of integer so both are exactly same two people are totally same now they can override only so i have taken the example of managers that one manager and second manager are having the same qualification same designation but one can work at a time so like the first one was working if the second manager comes then second manager is going to replace the first one and this thing happen on the run time just like in the dot net or the java or the c++ which are the object oriented programming languages there are so many predefined functions available now these predefined functions we override means we write their code by ourselves now our code is going to override override means overlap so our code will work for their existing code so their existing code can be updated by our code that is called the overriding because we are stopping the dot net existing program to work and we are making our program to work so that is the overriding so this is how we can see that if any language support the four features which is abstraction inheritance encapsulation and polymorphism that is called the object oriented programming language and out of these four features we have inherited other features just like classes structure overloading and overriding so that is all about the object oriented concepts